Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today, I want to continue my discussion of Bill C-21 with a look at the suspension provisions that they're proposing to add to the Firearms Act. Uh, they've called these the yellow flag laws. So let's have a look at that. So suspension, if a chief firearms officer has reasonable grounds to suspect on the basis of information that they have collected or received from any person that the holder of a license is no longer eligible to hold the license, they may suspend in respect of a license the holder's authorization to use, acquire, and import firearms for a period of up to 30 days. They've got to give you notice, uh, which needs to include the reasons for the decision, although there's a limitation on that, the nature of the information relied on for the decision, the period of the suspension, which is just always going to be 30 days. I don't see any reason why they'd ever do less. And a copy of this section and section 69.2 and 70. Uh, they don't have to disclose any information which could, in their opinion, endanger the safety of any person. And they shall terminate the suspension at the expiry of the period, or if they're satisfied that the grounds for the suspension no longer exist at any time before the expiry of that period and they shall give notice in writing of the termination of the suspension. While you're suspended, uh, you shall not use, acquire, or import firearms while their authorizations to do so are suspended under the previous section. And so that's the first thing that they have to let you know about. And the next is that they have to send you Section 70, which says that they may revoke a license, an authorization to carry, or an authorization to transport, uh, for any good and sufficient reason, including without limiting the uh, generality of the foregoing, and they list a whole bunch of things. So, uh, those are the suspension provisions. Now, I'd love to point you to the law in place that this is replacing. Um, unfortunately, uh, what it's replacing is not actually law. What it's replacing is a practice by the chief firearms officer, which is not found in the law, and in my view is actually in contravention of the law, of placing holds on people's licenses. And so what they do is they just internally place a hold. They don't revoke the license. But uh, if somebody calls up, be, you know, because they want to buy a license or buy firearms, buy ammunition, they'll say, oh, that's on hold. Don't give it to them. Now, that to me sounds like a revocation of the firearms license, not a hold. And there's no provision in the Firearms Act for any such hold. So it appears that the chief firearms officers have essentially invented law and then decided that that's good enough. They can run with that. So I have problems with that, as I'm sure you can hear, because I don't think that's how the law should work. I think that, you know, just as the law binds you and I, it should also bind, you know, the chief firearms officer. The only sort of protections for gun owners are the procedural protections found in the Firearms Act, found in the Criminal Code, and so forth. And so if they start inventing new procedures, that's really not a good thing. I don't approve of that in any way, shape, or form. So um, that's sort of a starting point, as you can see uh, sort of my, uh, my uh, notions on that. Now let's uh, have a look here at uh, some of the aspects here. So going back here, they say reasonable grounds to suspect. Now reasonable grounds to suspect is actually a really low standard. It's a lower standard than reasonable grounds to believe. Uh, they don't have to do a whole lot of investigation here. So this is something that they can impose on very little grounds, which is a bit of a problem because it means that they can impose this fairly readily. Uh, now, you know, the criteria here is that if you're no longer eligible, so people might be saying, well, what does it mean to be eligible for a license? And the main thing that's going to come up is this rule, uh, public safety, that you're not eligible to hold a license if it is desirable in the interest of the safety of that or any other person, that the person not possess a firearm, crossbow, prohibited weapon, restricted weapon, prohibited device, ammunition, or prohibited ammunition. Which means that uh, basically if they hear something that makes them suspect that, uh, no longer will they have to do an investigation and you know look into that and provide any sort of process. They can just hit you with the suspension right off the hop. And, you know, this suspension's pretty nasty. It bars you from doing a whole lot of things. So if you had plans, um, cancel those plans. Right now, if they want to do something, they actually need reasonable grounds. That's a, a bigger step and, to my mind, a, a more justifiable one. Um, one thing I've heard people worrying about here is... Uh, with respect to this provision, 
that you shall not use, acquire, or import firearms. Now, they've said, well, what about, you know, paintball guns? What about, you know, air guns? That sort of thing. Now, those are 84 sub 3 firearms usually, and thus wouldn't count as firearms for the purposes of the Firearms Act. This is actually going to be limited to real steel firearms, so that concern is maybe not as uh, not as justified. There's a few other issues that I see here. Not, you know, the issue of they can do this on very little ground, very little evidence is to my mind a big one. Uh, but the other thing is that there's no limitation that seems to be written in sort of hard and fast that says that they can't keep doing this. So uh, where there's going to be litigation over this and ultimately it's going to be the, for the courts to decide, but what I suspect this is going to mean is that if they decide after 30 days that they need another 30 days, they'll just suspend you again and they can just keep doing that. Um, unless the court says, no, you know, they've only got 30 days and then they've either got to, you know, pick whether they're proceeding under another section or give up. But I kind of suspect the court's going to say, oh no, they decided they need more time. They just resuspended. That's fine. Um, That'll be a question ultimately that gets sorted in the courts, but this is kind of my suspicion as to how things are going to go based on, uh, amongst other things, the court's unwillingness to push back on the holds that I've seen uh, imposed. So I have some concerns there because if they can just keep suspending you for 30 days and then another 30 days and then another 30 days, this is basically a revocation. And the other thing here is that... Uh, you know, notwithstanding the fact that it's basically a revocation, it doesn't come with any of the procedural fairness that comes with a revocation. So when you get revoked, uh, then you are entitled to use this section, section 74, which is the provincial court review procedures. But that is triggered when they refuse to issue, revoke a license, registration certificate, etc. And so uh, that is... That's a great provision, and depending on which province you're in, your case law may either say that if they don't specifically say that you don't have access to Section 74, then you do, but they haven't specified that Section 74 applies to this. What that means is that uh, you're, if you want to challenge this in court, you're going to have different review procedures, potentially, and certainly this is what the federal government is going to argue, uh, if your chief firearms officer is a federal appointee, they're going to say you have to go to federal court, which you're not going to get heard within those 30 days. And you're certainly not going to get heard for less than about $10,000 at the minimum. So, you know, they can just impose this and then, you know, 10000 bucks to challenge it. Of course, they have nearly infinite coffers and you, I am guessing, don't have 10 grand just to, you know, to blow on this. I certainly don't have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars just for sport. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Now, if you have a, uh, a CFO who is a provincial appointee, you may have reference to Queen's Bench or, you know, the equivalent in whatever your province is, which is probably going to be a little bit cheaper but you're still not going to get it heard within 30 days. So this is a provision that is really open to being abused. I can tell you that the, you know, the holds in my experience have been uh, misused because what I've seen quite frequently is that somebody wins in court. And so they, you know, they win uh, a, a firearm revocation. They win on criminal charges and they get a court order that directs that their firearms be returned. And then they go and they find out that as soon as they won, or maybe before that, a hold, again, doesn't exist in the Firearms Act, doesn't exist in the Criminal Code. This is something that is just a pure invention. But uh, they find that a hold has been placed on their license, and then the, you know, the police say, we're not giving you your guns back. Or they go to buy one and it's like, no, you can't have one, notwithstanding the fact that you won in court on the revocation issue. And so they're sort of at a loss. How do I challenge that? Because I just won on the revocation issue and now they're saying I still can't use my firearms license. So I have seen what I view as abuses in this uh, regime. And it would not surprise me to continue to see, you know, issues with respect to that. 
you get charged with you know careless storage or the like and you beat the charges and they still say no we're just going to suspend your license because we want to what are you going to do about that so i think this is an extremely bad provision i think it's an unnecessary provision i think that the current legal regime has worked just fine and i mean the current legal regime without the bits that uh the cfo has essentially created out of thin air i mean the current regime as it's found in the firearms act and the criminal code i haven't seen any sort of justification provided for why this is needed other perhaps than that the cfos have liked this hold provision and wanted it to be a real thing they want that provision to grow up and become a real boy and actually be written in the law but uh, i don't think that the chief firearms officers or any sort of government bureaucrat should effectively be given this sort of power that is effectively immune to review and imposable on an incredibly low standard you know that is such a low standard the reasonable grounds to suspect they don't even have to believe it's true they just have to think well maybe we've got this report to look into and you know so again i've got real big problems with this it's really going to be a provision that uh, that gets abused and we're going to see that going forward if this goes into law so i'm not a fan of this provision uh, i don't think it should be imposed but uh, let me know in the comments below what you think um, thank you for watching uh, i know that these are kind of depressing videos for the most part but please like the uh please like this video please share this video with your friends so that they can see what's going on uh, please subscribe to see more content it helps the channel grow it really does uh, help me keep doing these and i also want to thank my patreon supporters at the 50 dollar level demo sir daniel wicks of alberta canada's national farms association north central process service and kyle martin at the 20 dollar level cameron johnson dale nesbitt and andrew elsich uh, as well as uh, sites and arms limited and a number of you at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you once again. All of, you know, I have some big plans uh, coming up, but uh, you guys have made all this possible. So thank you. I hope I've armed you with knowledge and have a good night.